Welcome to the email OSINT section. We're going to talk about discovering email addresses. And this is something that I do on a weekly basis. So I'm going to show you the most common tools that I use to actually look up email addresses and try to find people and what you can do to kind of verify email addresses. So I'll show you some of my favorite tools and concepts. And this is something that I do because not only for OSINT and doing it for investigative type work, but think about sales. If I'm trying to find a lead or I'm trying to find multiple leads within an organization, I have to figure out where the emails are, who the people I'm trying to email are. So maybe I'll Google them and say, who is the uh, CISO or chief information security officer for this company? And I might find that it's Bob Jones and we go look up Bob Jones and we say, OK, well, how do I get Bob Jones's contact information? Can I find it via Google? Maybe maybe it's out there in the public, but maybe we have to dig a little deeper. Maybe we have to kind of do some guesstimation and see if we can figure it out. So that's what we're going to do today is is look at the email addresses, formats and try to determine if we can find some emails. So. Let's go ahead and move over to the Kali Linux machine that I've got. And the first website is one of my favorites. So hunter.io, you just come to hunter.io, you get like 50 or 100 free searches a month. I don't remember what it is. It's it's a fair amount. Uh, you can come here and basically just type in a company name. So like say I want to type in TCM security, TCM dash sec. And you can see TCM security here. We get one result on the email address. So we'll click it and see what happens here. Uh, and looks like we have like an info at tcm-sec.com. It tells us, hey, there's five sources that identify this. So we see tcm-sec.com. There's an about blog. So this is where they're finding it, OK? Um, a better example, maybe a, something that has more users like Tesla. Tesla has 468 users. If we come in here and we look, well, we can see that they have a pattern identified here. So their pattern they're identifying is first initial, last name, at tesla.com. And that's really what we want to see. And then we can gather email addresses here if we want. But say like we knew Bob Jones. Again, going back to that example, Bob Jones. So maybe Bob Jones works at Tesla. Maybe his email would be bjones at tesla.com. So it's something to think about. Now, we can sign up and get actual information here. You should be able to sign up with a Gmail account. Sometimes this does not work depending on the country that you are in. So be cognizant. You might have to use a different email address, but I just tried signing up with a Gmail account that I have on here, and it worked just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and try to log in. I'm going to sign in with Google with what's already here. And just now I'm logged in. So we can go back now and try searching Tesla again. And you'll see that the results actually come back. So we get information here now. We get, let me make this a little bit bigger. We get information as to, okay, here's the vice president. This is the vice president's email address. Uh, project development manager. Maybe you want to talk to somebody in human resources. So you can click here and go to human resources. And then here are the different human resources um, emails that are here. So and then the sources that they found these email addresses. So this isn't a particular person in HR, but it's still human resources email addresses. So this looks like it's probably for Hong Kong. This is for Berlin. This is Gigafactory. So they have different email addresses based on where they are. Now, if you looked up TCM security here, you're really not going to find much on us because we don't have a ton of email addresses out there. But I think that we can find more in other ways now. So we only get so many uses just here. We'll just keep thinking about this as we move forward. So 100.io, great, great resource. They have plugins if you want them. Um, I, I think it's a fantastic place to look. Phonebook.cz is the next resource I want to show you. This one is fantastic. Let's start with tcm-sec.com and see. So we're going to go tcm-sec.com and we're going to search email addresses here. So they do domains and URLs as well, which I think is awesome. But let's just search for email address, see if anything comes back. No, no results. OK, that's OK. Let's try Tesla and see what comes back there. OK, a lot more. 
So we get uh, quite a few email addresses. We could see Elon Musk all over the place. We've got Elon Dash Musk, Elon. We've got E Musk over here. And we get a ton of emails. Look at this. So what's nice about this is we can sit here and try to identify what the possible email addresses are. So again, first initial last name looks like it's showing up quite a bit. Um, outside of maybe like the Elon Musks of the world, we're getting a bunch of uh, mostly first initial last names in here. So I think that's pretty spot on with this. Uh, the other thing that we can do is we could utilize this list. Say we're we're trying to do something called credential stuffing, which we'll talk about in the next section, actually, when we talk about breach credentials. Uh, but say we're trying to gather a bunch of usernames and test and see if we can log in with those usernames anywhere. Um, or maybe password spraying, not so much uh, the credential stuffing, but password spraying, where we take all these usernames and we just throw it at a login form and say, hey, uh, summer 2020 exclamation point, you know, see if that logs into any of these accounts. And you would be surprised that it, it happens quite a bit. Uh, so, you know, these are this is valuable information, even if we don't know exactly. Maybe we're not just hunting for one email. Maybe we're hunting for an entire domain. This is a great way to get free entire domains with a quick copy and paste capability. Like we have the Tesla here, we can export the CSV from hunter.io, but you only get so many results that you can export into a CSV. Here you get a bunch. There's no guarantee these are all valid, but there's still it's still information. Information is what we want. This is all we're trying to gather is as much information as possible. So these are all potential email addresses for tesla.com. I think it's a great, great resource. Now, we could also use something like uh, Voila No Bear. Now, this one, you can get 50 more leads for free. I'm not going to show you. It's the same kind of deal as 100.io. They're showing you how to utilize it here. Um, basically, you can just search for people and see to try to find their email addresses. There is one I want to show you that I do use and I have quite a bit of success with, and that is called Clearbit. And Clearbit has to be used in Chrome. So I'm going to bring up this here. Clearbit has to be used in Chrome. So you can download the Chrome extension for Clearbit. And all you would have to do is go to Google. Let me log in really quick. And then I'm going to just select the free account. We get so many searches, 100 emails a month. Uh, so basically, you're going to search for Clearbit Connect and you would just say, hey, Clearbit Connect. I'll put a link down below, by the way. But Clearbit Connect is awesome. You're, you'll see why here in a second once I authorize this. OK, we're going to come down here, acknowledge, probably give out our firstborn. And then now we're going to say, hey, I want to find emails. And here's all different kinds of things that we can sit here and search for. You can see TCM securities in here. These are some searches that I've done. These aren't any clients of mine. These are just searches that I've done in the past, maybe looking for information or looking for possible leads or anything. So. Uh, if I come in here and I say, hey, I want to look for TCM security, you could type that in. I'm going to just click on TCM security and look what it discovered that the others didn't. It discovered me. OK, and if I click on me, look, it says heat that TCM dash sec dot com. Where where did that come from? And then look, it has my LinkedIn right here as well. That's amazing. That's awesome. And it says here you can email heat. Just click this button. And then it's also got Rizwan. Rizwan's on my sales team. Look, it's got Rizwan at tcm-sec.com. What does that tell you? That tells you that we're using a first name basis for our email addresses. It's awesome. Now let's come in here and maybe we want to look at Tesla. Maybe let's try Tesla one more time. Maybe we're looking for the CISO of Tesla. If Tesla has a CISO. You could come in here and look. Like Elon Musk is right here, obviously CEO. But you could come in here and maybe go by role. And they have different roles in here. So CEO, let's see if we can find any sort of CISO. Uh, I don't see one, but I do see information technology. So maybe we can find somebody in the information technology department or IT department. Um, and then here we go. We've got quite a few IT people. Here's a CIO. This could be somebody of interest that we might want to reach out to. And we could just scroll through this list and find people. So say we want to reach out to the CIO. Just click on this. We get first initial last name, just like we thought we would. We get this person's LinkedIn page. We get their location, website. This is awesome, awesome, awesome. So I typically will start with a Google search. If I'm trying to hunt something down, 
I will start with a Google search. I will say who is in this role at this company. If I'm looking for a specific person at a company, then I will go to phonebook.cz or hunter.io. Try to identify the the formatting of the email and then try to find that person or guesstimate that. Once we get to that point, I, I try not to burn through these clear bits unless I need to. But Clearbit is very good at identifying this. Once we get to that point, we can take this email, say like this, um, this email, or we'll even try a different email. I'll show you a couple. But we could take this and we can go try to verify this. So there is a website called Email Hippo. You can go to tools.verifyemailaddress.io. And all you have to do is type in an email address here. Sometimes you can get false positives if they're good or bad. Uh, here, I typed in this email address a couple of times and just got a bad result. This is an email address that does not exist. Now, let's try an email address that we saw, info at tcm-sec.com. See if it works. Result is OK. So it says, yeah, this email address works. So we're verifying that this is up. So say that you get somebody and you see that they have a potential email address. You can come here and try to verify it first and see if it works before you go fire off an email uh, or don't you don't even have to fire off an email. You don't have to do anything or interact. So this is the benefit. Like if you're from a sales perspective and you're doing OSINT here, the this is the benefit of not having to email, get waste your time, get it rejected. You can come in here and just validate. If you're doing an investigation, you don't want to interact with the person or company that you're investigating. You want to come in here and just verify without any interaction. This is the way to do it. Same thing with this website here. Emailchecker.net slash validate. Email dash checker.net slash validate. Say, hey, checking the email. I put the same email address here. You could see it says bad. We could try again with info at tcm-sec.com and see if that works. And it says OK. So again, this is doing a, a great job. There are possibilities of false positives. There are so many searches that you can do per month on these. I do believe they have APIs, which is nice um, if you want to automate this or script this out. But uh, I think this is this is fantastic. This is great stuff. Now, there are plenty of other ways to verify email addresses. In the next section, we'll talk about that even more as we talk about breach data, because if somebody shows up in a data breach, Guess what? That email address has been used in the past. If you look at something like a Have I Been Pwned, which we'll talk about in the next section, and they show up, guess what? That person's email address has existed. So we're trying to verify if an email address exists, who that address might belong to, et cetera. Now, this is more has been from a business perspective. Uh, some of this hunting down of emails may be more difficult to do if you're trying to find a specific individual. That's where breach data comes into play in a lot of this research. And what I'm going to show you in the next section, we'll try to hunt down individuals with maybe having loose pieces of information like a name or a username or something along those lines. Breach data can come in handy very, very well. So this is kind of scratching the surface. Now, there's one last thing I want to show you, one last little tip and trick. Do not underestimate forgot passwords. Do not underestimate them. Let's go to Google, for example. Right now, I am logging in under an account that is please don't hack me, sir, please. Uh, so it's please don't hack me, sir, PLZ, I do believe. I'm going to go ahead and try hitting next on that. OK, so first of all, it said, hey, welcome. And hey, what does this mean? This means that we have a valid account here. That's great. This is validating that this Gmail account exists. Here's something else. We can use this to tie to potentially another account or help validate. Say we know that this email belongs to somebody that's harassing somebody else. We don't know who this person is. They're using this spoofed email, but maybe we have a hunch or maybe we don't. Maybe we just want to try to get more data. You can come to forgot password and it's going to say, what's the last password you remember using? I don't know. Let's try another way. You come down here and it says, hey, let me make this bigger. Google will send a verification code to H and it says, look, it shows you the rest of the, the digits here and then at TC da 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 here. That would give you a pretty good indication if you're tracking who your subject is that this email could tie to somebody else. Look, this is heath at tcm-sec.com. OK, so this email belongs to me. This is tying back to me. Now you have another point here. So if you knew about this email address 
And now you have the link, the connection to guarantee that this person, this is evidence right here. Say you were doing something, which we'll learn about again in the next section, where you're looking through breach data, you find a username that matches this email address and also matches this email address, but people can reuse usernames. There could be multiple people who use the same username. So you need to verify or some link this would be a proof of a link between those, a pretty strong proof if you ask me. If you can say, hey, I identified two email addresses with the same username, I did an account recovery, came in here and saw that this had this same first character and first domain name, um, I think that's a pretty strong correlation. So things to think about, wheels to be spinning. Try to identify email addresses in any way possible. We'll cover this more in depth in the next section. And I'm really excited because password hunting is one of my favorite things. So let's go ahead and move on to the next section when we talk about password OSINT.